So let's move to the next slide where you talked a little bit about this, but maybe, you know, on this slide, what is for you disruption? What does it mean in terms of opportunities, but also, you know, impact or challenge? So the first thing I have to realize is every obstacle is really an opportunity in disguise. If you have no problems in your life, you'll be a horrible entrepreneur, right? If you grew up with a silver spoon in your mouth, go run for president, okay? What you really want to do is say, well, I have a problem. I now see a solution. Wow, a lot of people have this problem. So disruption is about changing something that cannot be changed back. And I'll give you some examples of how fast our world is changing. And you either get run over by this change or you'll, you'll benefit from it. 3D printing will eliminate 320 million manufacturing jobs in the next five years. For those in the U.S., the number one job in the U.S. by numbers is truck driver. Self-driving isn't just about cars. Self-driving is about 18 wheelers, okay? Tens of millions of truck drivers are about to lose their, their, their jobs. Office automation will cull the ranks of middle management in half. And for those people to go, oh, I am a financial planner. I have an MBA. I'm a tax specialist. I'm in the advice industry. I'm highly trained with lots of knowledge. Artificial intelligence will normalize that out of existence. So whether by choice or circumstance, every career is about to be disrupted. And we're changing at a pace faster than has ever existed. But that also means opportunities faster that phone in your pocket, you are one click away from 6 billion people. You only have to be right for a nanosecond to make a billion dollars or change the world. So disruption is happening. It's part of it. And you can either benefit from it or suffer from it. But the choice is completely yours. You no longer have a geographic advantage of being in a certain city or a certain country. Everybody's connected. You might have an advantage now where your country can employ people cheaper. You have access to something different, but we all have access to the same markets. And the old established elite that could set up government protections for their industry or their business or their nation state, well, look at blockchain and how Bitcoin and other digital currencies work, and they'll no longer be regulated or manipulated by this government or this European Union or whatever. And when money and opportunity flow freely, you suddenly either are part of the solution or really part of the problem. So that's what disruption is about right now. And, and one last second on this of why I'm dedicating the last third of my life to try and teach and help this. When we look at the problems of, in the inner cities in the U.S., Baltimore, Ferguson, Missouri, it's made the global news. When we look at what's happening in the, in the French economy, the Greek economy, when we look at what's happening with ISIS, from my perspective, this isn't about race, culture, or religion. This is about the lack of jobs and opportunities for billions. We have 2.3 billion millennials. That's more people in one generation than were on the entire planet when my parents were born. There will not be corporate jobs for them. So unless we teach people how to create new opportunities, how to benefit from the sharing economy, from sustainability, we're doomed for having the, the stable type of lifestyle that we enjoy today. Yeah, that, that's great, Jay. Um, I think that's a really good way of putting it, uh, why, why it's important. Absolutely. So one of the things you know, I've read in your ebook, uh, in your book, sorry, which is really interesting in term, with regards to disruption is ideas don't need necessarily, you talk about in your book, to be complicated. Right, uh, like you had an example about when the computer was created, some guys came up oh. with the mouse or came up with the mouse map. So there was yeah. other examples. Yeah. yeah, it's a great story. So in the early days of PCs, all the best and brightest were coming up with new software. We'll make a spreadsheet, like you know, you know, as Excel nowadays, or you know, we'll come up with word processing. We'll come up with graphic packages. I had a friend named Billy, and he said, "Wait a second, somebody's buying a two thousand dollar box to put in their house." He's going to make a plastic dust cover to go over it, okay? And then, oh, when the mouse comes out, it goes, oh, wow, people are going to have that thing? I'll make a mouse pad. 
and people are going to have tons of floppy disks. I'll make a plastic box that holds the floppy disk. So never learning how to use a computer, he sold his company when he was still, maybe he was 30 years old for $135 million, okay, to Rubbermaid. And the moral of the story is each new disruption creates a new ecosystem. And if you think, well, that's a story from the old days or whatever. When you went out and bought your iPhone, before you walked out of that store, you bought a plastic screen that goes over the front for $10 that cost a penny to make. And you bought a case that goes on the back for $15 that cost six cents to make. So there's always people looking at the new economy and new ways where somebody didn't focus on massive opportunities. So, yeah. and, and it's, it's really about also being positive, right? Thinking positive and, and finding ideas like exactly. this, simple and going about change in a positive manner, right? 